Amen. Wasn't that some good singing? Amen. Amen. The choir sounded great. Brother Mike did a good job. We appreciate the Lord and what he's allowed us to feel tonight. Amen. God's just been real good to us. I want you to pray for us tonight. I got a thought on my heart, and I want to do, do the Lord's will. Don't want to be disobedient. And I know that Scott was sitting over there, and he seen me pull out two pages of notes, and and I looked at him, and I could feel him breathing down my neck. And I wanted to know I'm gonna fold one of them and put it up. Amen. But tonight I want you to turn your Bibles to Judges chapter number seven. I want to talk to you just a few, few minutes on why we don't have victory in our life. If I had a thought above everything else, is why is there no victory in my life? That's the thought that God's laid on my heart. You pray for us just a minute when you find it. Judges chapter number 7. We'll be reading first six verses and then we'll get right into the message because hey, I, I understand that the flesh is weak. Amen. The, Jesus himself said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. And the older I get, I understand what he meant because sometimes the flesh just gets tired. Just gets tired. Amen. Stand with me for the reading of the word. In Judges chapter 7, we'll find it says, Then Jubrael, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morath in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee, are too many for me to give to the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel should vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to, proclaiming the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand. And there remained 10,000. Man. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water. And I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people into the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Lord, as we come to you just one more time, thanking you, Lord, for this day, thanking you for the privilege to be called one of your children. God, it is an honor and it is a privilege just to be a part of your family. We thank you for the church that you have put us in. We thank you for what you have established here. We pray that this place will always be a light set up on a hill that folks can find you. I love you, Lord, and I, I pray that God that tonight that you will help us to find victory in our life. I help I ask you, Lord, to help us to, Lord, to be an overcomer, not to be one that is overcome. Lord, we love you today and we thank you for everything that you have done. Go with us, lead, guide, and direct in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. In the book of Judges in chapter number 6, real briefly, we'll find out that God has called Gideon. He has set him up to be a judge 
over Israel. He is going to lead Israel. Israel is under attack by the Midianites. The Midianites are a thief. They rob. They steal. They kill. They sound. If they if there is a word that describes the Midianites, that the way that they treat the, the children of Israel, the word Satan or the word devil or the word Lucifer would be good to describe who the Midianites are acting like. They go in. They take everything. They let the children of Israel work all year long to raise a harvest, to raise their cattle. And the Bible says that the thief in John chapter number 10, it says that the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the devil would love to do nothing else but strip you tonight of everything, hoping that you will be depressed, hoping that you will be so down and out that you will give up, lay down, and think that there is no way out. Listen to me. And all of a sudden, I'm not going to preach the sixth chapter, but you ought to read it when you go home. Gideon has found his call. Amen. But I like this best. And I, I want you to understand something right there. Uh, I want you to understand something that uh, uh, maybe that's thunder. Amen. Uh, but listen, I thought it was me hitting the mic. But I want you to understand that the children of Israel, they are tired of being oppressed. And you will find in chapter 6, nothing changed until they cried out to God. And I want to tell you, nothing's going to change in your life until you get tired of the way you live living and you cry out to God. Notice what we quoted this morning, that the Bible says the poor man cried. It was not until the poor man cried out to God until anything happened happened in his life. Uh, listen to me. Somebody said, uh, I want something done. Take it to God. Amen. I was at home just for a little while today to take a shower and get come ready to come back to church. Amen. And uh, this preacher was preaching on TV. A lot of you might watch him. John Hagee, he's really, I like to listen to him. Amen. He was preaching. He said a lot of church folks uh, they want something, amen, but they don't want to do anything to get it. He used a great illustration, amen. He said, have you ever been led in bed at night and be real cold, amen, and they were, and you'd be just suffering because you're cold. And less than eight feet away from you, there's a blanket, amen. And he said, all you got to do is get up and get it, amen. And you'd rather lay there and suffer and deal with the cold, amen, than and make the effort to get up and go get with the blanket. He said, well, I've got an answer for that. He said, just tell your wife to go get it. Amen. And I thought of that, and that's what I want to talk to you. So many of us want it, but we want somebody else to go get it for us. Amen. We don't want to do what it takes. It takes coming out from under the covers to get that blanket. I know that when you come out from under the covers, you're not in anymore. Amen. Coming out, I, I, I just want to preach a little bit. I want to talk about five things that keep us, amen, from having victory in our life. Listen to me, amen. And listen, I want you to know that victory is yours if you want it. Hey, listen to me. Glenn and them sing a song. Victory is sweet, amen. Hey, listen to me. And I want, I want to tell you something today. There's nothing like to be a, to win, but it takes a great effort. Listen to me, and if you will, we got we get to chapter number seven. Gideon has been ordained of God. He is ready to go. He has got the children. He has 32,000 followers. He has an army of 32,000 men. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Now, listen to me. Uh, that sounds like a lot of folks, amen? But if you'll take time when you get home in the rest of this chapter that you will go down to, I don't know about the 15th or 16th verse, you will find out that the Midianites are like grasshoppers. They cover the fields. They're everywhere. Their camels are more than they can be numbered, amen? Hey, listen to me. 32,000 men ain't not a drop in a bucket compared to the army that we're facing, Amen. But God has told Gideon, he said, you've got to get some things right, amen? Before you're able to have victory in your life, you're going to have to get rid of fear, amen? Can I talk to you about five things 
that keep us from having victory in our life. Number one, the fear of what we're facing. Amen. The fear of what we're facing. In 1 Samuel chapter number 17, the children of God are caught up on one hill. Amen. Down in the valley, there's a nine foot giant. He's plowing out to him. His name is Goliath. Notice, Goliath never slayed anybody. Amen. All he did was make proclamations. All he did was smuggle words. Amen. A day and night for 40 days and 40 nights he would come and he would tell the children of God, find me someone. Amen. That would come. And you know what, Brother Larry? There's so many of us are stopped. We are not fighting anymore. We are not willing to go to battle for God because of the fear of how big, what we're facing. Uh, some people are scared, amen, of how big of what, they, what they're up against, amen, in their lives. Some folks are up against physical illness. Some folks are up against financial issues. Some folks are up against Amen. Family crisis. Amen. Uh, but I want you to know one thing. Oh, we need to get rid of that fear in order for us to have victory in our life. We've got to get rid of the fear of what's in front of us. Amen. Because hey, guess what? I read in 1 John chapter number 4, uh, verse number 4. This is what the Bible said. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm not afraid. Amen. Of a God, you say, preacher, you don't get scared? Absolutely, I get scared. I get scared when my youngest get sick. I get scared when my wife gets sick. I get scared when I lose my job. I get scared when things go wrong. There's a part of me that is afraid. Hey, but I'm going to tell you what. We've got to be like John said. We've got to love him enough that he said that perfect love cast us out all fear. We've got to get like Job. We Amen. said in chapter 13, uh, verse number 15, he said, Though he slay me, amen. I'm going to trust him. I said, he took him. We've got to get to the point in our life that no matter what we're facing, that we know that Romans 8 28 said that all things work together for good to them who love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. Amen. I'm here to tell you today, amen. We've got to get rid of the fear of what we're facing, amen. Amen. Listen to me. God told, God told, listen to me. God told Gideon, said, Gideon, get that group you got and get them together. And he said, Gideon, you look at them and you tell them every one of them that's fearful or afraid, they're going to go home. You know what fear will do? It'll ruin you. Amen. Do you know what fear will do? It'll cause you to act in an unchristian like way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. My daddy told me, and I believe him, amen. He said, son, a man that's afraid, he'll hurt you. Yeah. I said, you get, he told me, he said, son, if you ever get around mean dog, don't hit him up, amen. Always leave him a way out, amen. If you ever get him hemmed up, you're going to make him afraid. And when that dog gets afraid, he might not ordinarily bite you. Uh, but when you scare him, he's coming after you. How many here? Don't raise your hand, but fear of what you're facing, of your uh, of your life, amen, has caused you not to have victory in your life. Because you say, I ain't got I ain't got what I need. See, I'm trying to make a point here. We see the problems, but we don't see God. We, we fear the problem, but we have to realize that our God is bigger than our problem. God's bigger than cancer. God's bigger than money. God's bigger than anything else. The Bible said in John 4, 4, that he's greater than anything that you want to face. Amen. God's bigger than the devil. Say amen. 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 God is big enough to handle anything that we got. Hey, uh, over in the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we know that God is able. You know what made them so happy? Listen, they didn't want to die. I don't believe that neither one of them boys was ready to die. But they like, didn't have fear because they knew, hey, Paul said for me to live is for Christ. But he said for me to die is gain. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fear left them when they realized that God was going to be there no matter what. Amen. Amen. 
Hey, the first thing we got to do is realize the fear of what we're facing. Hey, listen to me. And I want to go talk to you about a few more things. Listen to me. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the fear of failure. Do you know what? Listen to me. Do you know what? The fear of failure has stopped a lot of folks. Uh, I've heard folks say God said do this and you'd say I can't do it. Do you believe that God knows everything? Do you believe that God knows everything? I mean, do you believe that the God, you believe the Bible, don't you? Do you believe the God that knows the very number of hair that is upon your head knows your capabilities? Amen. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Do you know, do you think He knows what you're capable of? Do you think that God is going to ask you to do something that you cannot do? He might ask you to do something you ain't never done. But he won't ask you to do something you can't do. God is not a God that brings up failure. Amen. Notice, notice this. Everybody that God has ever asked to do anything has been able to do it. Has God ever had a failure? Read about it. Think about it. God don't raise up failure. God is not going to send you somewhere to do a job that you are not capable of doing. So the fear of failure, when you know that you're right with God, we should have no reason to fear that we can't do it because we can do all things. What does Philippians 4.13 say? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens, that which strengthens me. See, the fear of failure has stopped a great a lot of folks. The fear of failure has stopped a lot of folks from reaching the big having victory in their life. Listen to me. I, I want to be honest with you. I don't like to fail. I don't like to lose. I don't like to give in. Amen. But Brother Jamie, sometimes the fear of failure causes us to give in to the wiles of the devil. Because the devil is constantly telling me, hey, do you know he tells me I'm no preacher? Do you know he tells me I'm not saved? Do you know he tells me that I'm going to hell? Do you know he tells me that this church is going to fall apart? Do you know he tells me he's going to kill my kids? Do you know he tells me he's constantly talking to me? Amen. And that's the reason James said that we had to submit ourselves unto God and we had to resist Him. Amen. And when He comes to you and says you can't do it, you said God brought me to it and He'll get me through it. Amen. No one wasn't a heart builder. Somebody help me. Moses wasn't a deliverer. Amen. Joshua wasn't a leader. Or somebody help me right here. And God, when God gets ready to send you, somebody said God has laid on my heart uh, I mean, now, when God really does something, I'm not talking about something that just got you emotionally involved. Hey, Amen. There's so many folks today that Brother Darren, they'll get wrapped up in their emotions and they'll jump up and say, God's called me to preach or God's called me to do this or God's asked me to do that and it fizzles out. You know God didn't have nothing to do with that because if God called you, you're going to do it. Hey, Amen. Uh, I got news for you. Hey, Amen. I'm so glad. Listen, I'll never Never forget, I was about 18, 17 or 18 years old. I was so sure that God had made a mistake. I was so sure that God didn't want me to preach that I told my sister and I told a little girlfriend that I had, I said, listen, I've made it up. I'm not a preacher. I, uh, God didn't call me to preach. Uh, he didn't have nothing to do with it. He didn't have no part in it. I just wanted to make everybody happy. And about a week, I went along and let that go. But then all of a sudden, Brother Tony, I got a, I heard something, amen, that let me know, yes, sir, you are. Amen. Listen to me. God said, I don't care what you think about yourself. You're going to do what I tell you to. And Brother Zach, your daddy's made a mess out of it. I've, all, I've messed up more times than I got fingers and toes. Oh, but through all of my failures, uh, God has been so good that he is finding a good in me. And I'm so glad. Hey, man. Hey, listen, I ain't got to worry about failing as long as I follow the leader. Hey, man. I ain't got to worry about failing as long as I follow direction. Hey, man. I ain't got to worry about the fear of failing as long as I'll do what he asked me to. Listen to me. Listen to me. 
What would you do if God was going to take two-thirds of your army away? Listen, Elijah, God is telling Gideon, he said, to, he said, I want you to tell every one of them that's afraid and fearful to go home. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. And they are, you know what they were afraid of? That they couldn't win. Do you know what we are fearful of so many times? Hey, listen to me, that we can't do it. That's right. Do you know that handicaps a lot of folks? You know what? I, I, I listen, I've heard this, and I, you know, God, I, I don't want to never say this, but I've heard preachers get up and say, I ain't got no education. I, I just went to the third grade. That I, I don't know nothing. Amen. But if God called you, He's qualified you, and if you'll seek the face of God, He'll learn you. He'll give you the words to say. I've had preachers tell me they couldn't read, but God called them to preach, and all of a sudden, uh, they begin to learn to read. Amen. Anybody? I, I want to tell you, those that God really called, He'll get you through it. Amen. Hey, but the fear of failing. Amen. The fear of not doing good. Now, who, why are we so afraid of? Because we are fearful of failing in front of folks that we love. Amen. Now listen to me. I'm going to stop right here. You see Miss P? Now listen. If we're, in a, if, we're, if we're in a race and we're pushing a wheelbarrow, and it's got 500 pounds, and me and you, Brother Tony, are pushing it up a hill, you got yours and I got mine. Amen. You know that, listen, if she ain't there, I like to quit going up that hill and tell you that I ain't going up that hill. Amen. But if she walks up, I ain't quitting. Amen. Uh, we'll go all the way to the top or we'll die trying. Amen. Hey, listen to me. And you know why? Because we have a fear of failing in front of folks that we love. We ought to not fear failing because if God asks you to do it, He'll give you the strength to do it. Amen. Hey, I want to ask you something. Amen. Have you ever been afraid and thought that you wouldn't go to make it? That is the fear of failure. When you feel like that you are going to throw in the towel. See, they were beat before they started. A lot of us that don't have victory in our life are defeated before we ever go into battle. Because we don't realize that if God is for us, then who can be against us? Amen. We don't realize that that. God is going to give us the strength to do it. God's not asking you to do this alone. God is not asking you to do this alone, but God's asking you to do it through faith, through Him. I know that, listen to me, but Gideon's men, are they are afraid. They're fearful of faith. And so many folks won't sing. God bless their heart want them to sing, but they are afraid of getting up there and might not hit the right note. Or that they, they are fearful, amen, of not doing the right thing. Amen. Don't let the fear of failure, failure stop you from being victorious in your life. Somebody said, I can't live it. Go turn them off, say, you go. Hey, somebody said, I, God didn't ask you to live it by yourself. Amen. God didn't ask you to walk this road alone. God didn't ask you to do that. The fear of that, listen to me, the fear of failure, I will be honest with you, comes from the devil. What did the devil tell me in my? He said, whatever you build, a fox will carry it down. Whatever you do, Nehemiah, it's not going to amount to anything. You ain't got no people to work it. You ain't got enough people to do it. He was dealing with Nehemiah. He was taking the fear of not being... Nehemiah was not a superintendent. He was not a construction work, worker. He was a cupbearer. And he was taking... So many folks won't step out of the boat. I've got to hurt. Now, so many folks won't step out of the boat because of the fear of sinking. Amen. Amen. Won't step out of the boat because you're afraid you're going down. One man stepped out and he stepped out on faith instead of fear and he walked on water. But when fear came into his life, what happened to him? He began to sink. 
You know what sinking means? That he began to think that he was failing, that he was going down. Listen to me. The fear of what we're facing and the fear, listen to me, of failure stops us from having victory in our life. And I want to tell you something. The fear of being forsaken stop, helps us. It stops us from having victory in our life. How many here feel like you're alone? Uh, now listen to me. There's times that we all feel isolated. There's times that we all feel like that there's nobody around. There's times that we feel like the devil's got us on the island and there's no hope for us. Do you know what? Listen to me. They have been told, listen, the devil loves to tell you that God doesn't love you. He'll leave you. But listen to me. I'm going to read you something that comes from Hebrew chapter number 13, verse number 5 and verse number 6 right here. You say, preacher, what are you getting at? Listen to me. When I got to studying this and I said, Lord, I feel I, I, I'm afraid of being, uh, being forsaken, forsaken, amen, for, for being left alone. In Hebrews 13, 5, it says in the last part of that verse, this is what the Word of God says. It says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But listen to this, 13, 6 says, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. Hey, listen to me. I want the devil to know he might get me, but he'll have to go through Jesus Christ to get me. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Somebody said, preacher, what are you getting at? Hey, just like Job, God's got a hedge around me. There's angels encamped about me. The Bible said there's angels and count about those that love the Lord. Amen. But the fear of being alone. The fear of being one. Does that ever scare you? Think about it. What does that mean? The fear of having to face something by yourself. The fear of having to go through a battle all by yourself. David said in the 23rd Psalm, how many ever read that? He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Amen. Why? He said, because thou art with me. Amen. He said, you're with me. I'm not alone. Anybody here ever felt alone? Anybody here ever felt the fear of being alone? Hey, listen to me. I'll never forget when my daddy died. Amen. That was a hard time in our life. And us kids... We constantly stayed around the house with Mama. We wouldn't leave. And I don't know if it was because we got on our nerves or what, but she told us one day, she said, y'all got to go home. She said, I've got to learn to handle this. She said, y'all are not always going to be able to be here, but I've got to get over the fear of thinking that I'm always alone. I'm always alone. There's times that she has told me that don't worry about me. I'm never alone. God's always with me. But I know there's times, Granny, in that old house that she sat there by herself when sons weren't there, daughters weren't there, grandkids weren't there. Have you ever been in a house? Have you ever been where things were so lively when you would have your whole family? At Mom and Daddy's house, we would always go down there every holiday. And we would all be there. And we still do. But you know what? There's time now that when everybody goes home, but she's still right there. She's still right there. You know what she's done? She's had to put her trust in the Lord. When you feel like you're alone, you know what you have to do? You have to realize that there's somebody that's right there beside you that will never leave you or never forsake you. He's there. Amen. He's there. Amen. When you're in trouble, when you are, are, are having a, a physical trouble, or when you're having financial trouble, or mental problems, or whatever you're going through, the Lord is there, and He's always with you. But the fear of going through it alone scares us to death. Scares us to death. But Hebrews chapter, I pay a lot of attention to the fifth verse. Because, but then the sixth verse, I caught on. He said that I might boldly say, boldly, out loud, speak it. Don't just think it, speak it. 
Talk out loud. Tell the devil, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my help. He's going to get me through this. Amen. The fear of being forsaken or forsook. Amen. Uh, scares us to death. But in Hebrews that seek first, he says that I may speak boldly. Be brave. Ain't that what he's talking about? Uh, speak like you got some courage. God ain't going to let me face this by myself. God ain't going to leave me holding the bag. Have you ever trusted somebody and they leave you holding the bag? Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to hurt. Amen. But the fear of failure, hey, listen to me, the fear of being pursued, amen, scares us to death. Amen. Listen to me. And I want to go over two more real fast and I'll let you go tonight. And I want to tell you what, the fear of our future scares us to death. How you know? Because I hear folks all the time saying, if I just knowed what tomorrow hold, I'd do it. If I just knowed what was out in front of me, I'd take care of it. Have you ever heard somebody say, if I could just get a glimpse of what's going to happen to me tomorrow? The fear of our future. The fear of our future. The fear of what's in front of us. The fear of what's going to be thrown at us tomorrow. Ain't it? Hey, I want to be honest. It, 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 it's so uncomfortable to try to live in fear all the time. When I was younger, before I got things right with the Lord, I got afraid to do anything because I was afraid God was going to hurt me or I was going to die. And I would be scared of the dark. I would be afraid of everything. And all of a sudden, I, I would begin to say, Mama, you pray for me because I, I, there was a fear that come upon me. And do you know that makes you uncomfortable? You can't sleep. You can't rest. When, you're, when you are afraid of what's in front of you. How many has ever been afraid of what you had to face tomorrow? How many of y'all have ever had a job that was bigger than you was and that you know that you had to get up, that you knew you had to get up in the morning and go up there and face that job? Uh, a lot of times we work on things that are real high. Sometimes that they scare me when I know I'm going to have to hang on uh, to something to do a job. And the fear of that job, amen, would constantly bother me all that night. And I would get no rest. I would walk the floors. And I couldn't wait for morning to come so I could go and get that behind me right there. Hey, is there something you need to get behind you this morning? Hey, the other night, listen to me. The fear of your future. Hey, listen to me. Hey, I want you to know, I want you to know something. Jesus is our Alpha and Omega. Our beginning and our end. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want you to know He is our finisher. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Now, I want you to just... Just, just touch this. Give me five more minutes. Amen. But there are so many folks. Amen. So many folks that are afraid of their future. But God's got your future in the palm of His hand. Amen. God's got it. We've been preaching on decisions. You know what you ain't got to worry about in your future? Making the decision where you're going to get up in the morning or not. That's not a decision that you'll make. If you wake up, it'll be by what? The grace of God. Hey, you ain't got to worry about that decision. That's in God's hand. We ain't got to worry about our future because that is in the hands of God. And when we come to realize that God loves us and that our future, He's going to do only the good things for us. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Only the good thing. And then I want to preach on one little point. The fear of our future. And I wrote this down. I, I want to read it to you. And it says in Revelation 1.17. And it says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive and forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. 
Write these things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. Amen. That last verse, do you know what it tells me? That God took care of my past, God's taking care of my present, and God's going to take care of my future. Amen. I can rest good tonight knowing not that my life's in the hands of all state, but my hands is in the God hands of a great God. Amen. The, my, hands, my life is in the hands of of a God that loves me. Amen. Next, I want to talk to you about the fear of finishing. A lot of folks won't start nothing they don't think they can finish. A lot of folks won't start something they don't think they can finish. So many of us are so afraid of starting something for God. Listen to me. I want you to know, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, he said, Timothy, I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith, I have finished my course. Henceforth for me is laid up a crown of righteousness, not only for me, but for everyone that believeth on Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to me today. We can finish it. We can do, we can do the job that God's called us to do. We can complete it. How many of us the preacher himself gets scared sometimes when God asks me to do that. He said, Lord, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay for it? How am I going to take care of it? I'm talking about seriously. Has <coughs> God ever laid it on your heart to give somebody some money? Just see somebody out there that needs something and you have $100 in your pocket. God said, I want you to give that $100 to that person. Then all of a sudden, you're, you're worried about finishing doing the will of God because you're, you're worried about how you're going to get through. Amen? And God said, give it to Him. And you give it to Him, and it seems like God just opens up heaven on you the next week. Have you ever kept it because of the fear of you not being able to make it granted and then it costs you more than it would have in the long run? Amen. I've been there. I have let fear keep me from being obedient to God. Fear has crippled the army of God. This too. Fear has crippled the army of God. Do you know how many men were afraid and how many men went home? Over two-thirds of Gideon's army loaded up and went home. 22,000 men said, I'm afraid. Admitted that I'm afraid and they went home. Went home. The fear that they couldn't finish what God had started. The fear of not being able to win the battle. The fear of not knowing how it was going to be done. God had a plan. God had a plan. You ought to read the rest of this chapter. I'm in the hush because I know this weather is getting rough. You know, I can tell by y'all's expression the windows are up and the beds are getting wet. And, uh, uh, we, we got to go home and shut the windows and we got to go home and make things better. Amen. I understand that. We've been to go. But listen, don't let the fear of you finishing it stop you from doing, having victory in your life. Because there I read something in Philippians chapter number 1, verse number 6. He said, He that has begun a good work in you, he that has begun a good work in you is able to perform it. In other words, to finish it. He's able to finish it. He's able to get it done. Hey, he's able. He's able. He can do it. Don't let the fear of what's in front of you stop you. 22,000 men. Two-thirds of his army went home. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm a leader, or if I'm a preacher and I lose two-thirds of my congregation, I'm second-guessing myself. Huh? If two-thirds of my congregation get up and walk out, I'm going home and talk to God. Am I in the right place? 
Am I doing the right thing? Lord, help me. Folks are leaving. How are we going to win? The fear of finishing what Gideon has started is eating him up right now because he has watched 22,000 folk walk off and leave him. But they saw that I gave you. They said, God, that's right beside well, again, everybody else can leave, but as long as you got God, you're going to make it. As long as you got God, we'll get through it. As long as we got God, we cannot be defeated. Amen. Amen. The Midianites are like grasshoppers, they are scattered among the hills. And here we are now, Brother Larry, with 10,000. I told you I was going to talk about these five things. I'm going to hush right there. Hey, this week, we are facing the rally coming up. Don't let these five things scare you or stop you from doing what God wants you to do. Stop you from having victory. Because you know what? The devil will have you believe it's too big for us to handle. The devil will have you believe that we can't do it. That's where failure comes in. The devil will make you think you can't get this done. Listen to me. He'll make you think that God's going to get us out there on a limb and leave us. That's the fear of being left forsaken. Amen. Hey, listen to me. And then the fear of how many is going to come. Don't let that bother you in the least. I don't want that to worry you at all. Because I've done been told God said He was coming. And if God comes, that's all I'm looking for anyhow. Amen. 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 And listen. The fear of finishing. We can get it done. We can do all things through Christ. I have a list of stuff, folks. I'm going to tell you, God said, that's it. We're not even going to sing an altar call. We're going to stay. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go home this week, and we're not going to let fear overcome us. We're not going to let fear stop us, Marshall. The fear of the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. Not, see, can, can I share something? Else? The devil's told me that them free air conditioning is not going to cool this place when we get 250 people in here. It's going to get hot. Folks going to get mad. Yeah. And if you think that's fun, you wait till you get about 150 folks in the fellowship hall and that little air condition goes straight. Huh? He, I, I've done went down the list, baby, of things that can go wrong. Dale and Rod, Donnie going to get in a fight down there at the, at the barbecue pit. <laughs> yeah. See what I mean? Things happen. Things happen. The devil's looking for something. But God said, don't you call it off. Don't you stop it. Don't you not do it. Because you are afraid of the devil. You tell the devil that I'm bigger than he is. And I told you you can do it. And you do it. Amen. 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 How many love the Lord tonight? Yeah. Amen. I love you tonight. I thank you for that. Uh, there's some more to this. I was going to talk to you. If God, I don't know if I'll ever get back that way. But if God be in our will, I will preach one day on three, the two other things that you have to do to have victory in your life. You have to keep looking up. You know what it means to lap water like a dog? Have you ever seen a dog lap water? He'll lap it, but his eyes is always in front of him. He's always, Brother Glenn, looking at what's coming in front of him. He ain't going to let nothing sneak up on him. Amen. And let me tell you what. I'm going to tell you what the, the hardest thing for us to do in order for us to have victory in our life, you ought to go home and read Joshua chapter number 7. And you'll find out in order to have victory in your life, you've got to get rid of sin. You've got to get sin out of your life and when sin is gone God can bless you he can bless your family and he can give you what you need amen how many is enjoying today how many is going not let the devil get the best of you this week amen I love you today I want you to remember our announcements remember now we're going to be praying at 730 Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday Wednesday we're going to meet at 615 going to have our supper and hopefully we'll be putting the tent up and getting it ready. If not, we'll put the tent up Thursday sometime. And I know that you, know, you have to work. Listen, we're not going to stress out on the ones that don't get to come be with us. We're going to pray with the ones that come. We're going to ask God that you pray wherever you at. I tell you what you can do. No matter where you're working or what you do, 
You can stop what you're doing at 730 and you can call out on God and say, God, remember that little place where I go to church? Remember that meeting that we're going to have Saturday? Save somebody, Lord. Help somebody. Let's get serious about it this week. Let's raise it up to God and let Him know. Amen. Remember that and we're going to have a good time. Amen. All right. Anything else? Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.